All right. Welcome back. It's season two of the 11 Tenths podcast. Things have changed and they haven't changed, mostly just seating positions. Um, this Dave, 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 Dave? Yeah. I'll throw a quick pickup. Done. Okay. So, <laughs> other than that, it's uh, the end of the season. I'll introduce my co host here. Randy Spar, I am David Belazic, Milk for Coffee. We're back. Uh, thanks for watching the last season, and we want to dive right into it because 2021 was an interesting year. How do you how do you enjoy your hobby when everything's on bloody lockdown? So mm -hmm. obviously that ended. Things things got better. Yep. Um, but it meant changes. Um, yeah, I mean, there's definitely uh, a lot less. There's there, there weren't any shows or any social events or cars and coffee and none of that going on for the first majority of the year. Yeah, holy smoke. I, I didn't attend a single cars for coffee. Yeah. You know, it was, that's, uh, that's yeah. kind of sad. Yeah. <laughs> but on the other yeah. side, I mean, schools started to open up again. Track days were, yeah. were, were open pretty much uh, for Track most of the year. Track days were happening. The schools, it was a little bit of, a, it was kind of a weird dynamic because uh, most like high-end schools will have an instructor sitting in the car with you. Yep. So they've changed it up to like a lead and follow. So you're following the instructor in the lead car and they're trying to watch your lines behind. But there's only so much you can really learn from that because how is an instructor going to critique your, your, your hand, your eye uh, positioning, your motion, everything that's happening inside the car. You know, are you turning in a little bit early, turning in late? It's really hard to see that kind of stuff from you know, a different car perspective, looking back or looking ahead, right? Yeah. So it's really hard. But, you know, people, or, you know, we always try and find a way, yeah. you know, where, where there's a will, there's a way. Right? Well, and that's the thing. It was more or less <clears> of <throat> a change in procedure where, yeah. you know, we want to keep the schools going, want people to enjoy track time. So we're going to do this lead follow thing. And, yeah. you know, there's certain disadvantages and then there's certain advantages too. I mean, the ability to see what a car is doing on the outside, I think that's probably more of an advanced thing, but there's nothing better than being in the seat, feeling and knowing exactly yeah. what you see and yep. and seeing what your student's doing at the same time, right? Mm -hmm. So knowing where the, the hands are, you yep. know, their vision. You mm -hmm. can't really see vision when you're behind or in front. Well, so the last school I was at, just actually last weekend, um, we did open up to having instructors in the car, mm -hmm. but it was everyone had to be double vaxxed. Right. So you had to have the proof and everything. and. And uh, you know, and not everyone the numbers, is there yet, right? The numbers weren't there. The school was, I'm going to say, 60% attendance, and it's late but, in the year too. Yeah, it was it's late. getting a little cold. Yeah, the weather was actually really nice. Go it was it. Like 13 degrees and, and, and sunny, you know, both days, which is yeah. for mid October. You know, you know. Well, I've, I've been to an October school. Was yeah. it October or April? One of them was snow yeah. at the same school. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. so I mean, obviously things are changing there, and I mean, it's uh, be be patient. I will say that with everyone, be patient as yeah. we come to learn, and you know. Oh, it's uh, the penalty of wearing a mask to be able to do the things that you love is not that bad sometimes because we were right. just talking about SEMA mm -hmm. right and we'll get more into that later because SEMA's come around again and yeah. that's that's always exciting so we'll touch on that later stay tuned um, one thing that I wanted to bring up is just something that seemed to grow during 2021 even more so and it's this thing that's come across the border and I think it's associated with people going a little stir crazy all these takeovers. Oh, the takeovers. The takeovers. Yeah. Hundreds of hundreds of people. Police were called in. Thousands of people flocked to an unsanctioned. Hundreds of people unsanctioned car rally. So it's you know yeah, and it's I mean it's a hashtag takeover. It's mm -hmm. I understand. Well, for those right? who don't know, like, yeah, let's explain this. Yeah, a, a takeover is I think where a group of people, yeah. late usually late at night in the wee hours of the morning, will you know grab several rear wheel drive cars and take over a mm -hmm. section of the street usually an intersection uh the bigger the intersection the better so yeah. we're talking about a major intersection and there'll be pedestrians lined around and these guys will just start doing donuts and uh and they'll do tandem donuts and then there'll be pedestrians inside the donuts and they'll be like running away from the cars and and actually i know somebody that uh came in one day and he was complaining about having a concussion and he was Ooh. in the hospital and he had uh, stitches in his head and he told me he was in a car accident and i was asking him if he's okay like what happened was he in a car or like what, like another car like tandem no drifting? so he was actually on one of the takeovers he's on the like i think he was on the trunk lid of a car doing the donuts and he slid off and he hit his head on the curb <sighs> i was like 
Star. World yeah. star. How do, you, <laughs> how do you comment on that, right? I'm just like, uh, well, I, I'm glad you're okay, right? But, yeah, but I mean, that's the, that's the kind of stuff. Like, I, I see I the, the, the see glorification the, of these yeah. things that are going on. There's car enthusiasts, but, like, also you hear this kind of stuff on the news, and it really gives a lot of, like, respectable uh, enthusiasts mm-hmm. a bad name. Yeah, right? it, draw, it draws a lot of negative attention. It, it does. And it's I don't know where these are coming from. You know. It's it's funny because they they've increased his popularity and and I know personally you get mm-hmm. stir crazy. I mean you, you sit there at home you're working on your car you want to go out and yep, yep. the nature of a takeover is really you're you're it's a group of people which is awesome in itself. Mm-hmm. Um, you know what we're forgetting is at the very beginning of the year there was like a parking lot takeover and someone yep. brought out a flamethrower. <laughs> These are the coolest products I have found on the internet. Remember? Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. Well, see, the other problem is these ter- takeovers have led to, like, provincial laws changing. Yeah, that's true. So now they're not allowing any... You'll get a stunt driving ticket for performing any of these things yeah. on private property. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, when you're on a nice snowy day and you're alone and you're out in the big Walmart parking lot at 3 in the morning... No more. Yeah, you're going to get a ticket for practicing how to do a donut by yourself. You know what I mean? Like, what about the enthusiasts that are actually yeah. doing a timed autocross yeah, or yeah. something? You know what I mean? Like, like sanctioned yeah. events are one thing, but I, you yeah. know what? I remember when this law came out. I was talking yeah. with my brother. He's yeah. got two new drivers in the household. You know, mm-hmm. one going for his G two, one going for his G one. Mm-hmm. And uh, the very first thing we talked about was snow in the parking lots. Mm-hmm. You want to in an empty parking lot, safety. You don't want to damage property. That's the one thing. It's all private or commercial property. You want to be careful, but. The whole point is, is you, you want to have an open and safe space mm-hmm. to learn. Yeah. Not everyone can take a two or three thousand dollar driving course. Yeah. People do that. A lot of people, you know, they go with their their dad or whoever, uncle, mom, whatever. You went, and a couple times you pulled the handbrake, and you had an idea like, oh my gosh, this is what it feels like, mm-hmm. and uh, that's illegal. That is one hundred. Oh, I guess it kind of always was illegal, but it wasn't a stunt driving charge. Now yeah. it's literally a stunt driving charge, which is yeah. big money, big time, loss of car. Mm-hmm. It's it's a whole other thing. So, yeah. and and that's that's what happens. Um, we're already seeing a big shift in how our scene is moving with uh, the electrification. And I mean, you know, we can talk about tracks. Everyone always talks about this. I'm not going to stay on it too long. But Laguna Seca, everyone makes fun of the Seca pipes because or Laguna pipes because so many people were like, hey, let's move down to this area close to this raceway, not thinking this raceway is going to be <laughs> loud. Yeah. So then the people who moved in after the track existed now said to the track, we gotta, we got to lower the decibel level here. It's too loud. So they have these special mufflers just to keep the, the volume down. Yeah. And it's a situation like that where you have to be aware that mm-hmm. what we do as a, as a hobby sometimes comes across as elitist, mm-hmm. right, depending. Um, it can be noisy. It can be smelly, yeah. right? Yeah. Um, it can seem wasteful. I mean, if you want to go full eco, yeah. uh, car scene can come across as quite wasteful at times really you're yeah. burning gas you're burning oil yeah, tire, bags, everything all that stuff, right yeah. so Back and that's maybe what we enjoy is you know i'm pretty sure i've sat at a stoplight a few times and no one wants to be up my butt because they're smelling all the fumes and, and small pop. you know that person may know i've been in the case where someone who lived on a street by a car show knew the mayor and basically, they reported the car show, which had nothing to do. People were speeding down the street, and they reported that to the mayor. So when you have that kind of stuff that goes on, you got to be aware that you never know who's <clears throat> watching and stuff like mm-hmm. that. So yeah. as much as we want to let loose and uh, takeovers are, are just an extenuation of what we all do already, I think it's just we got to it, it can get out of hand. Yeah. I, I you know That's what? True. Yeah. I, I actually I forgot I had a conversation with someone who who was responsible for organizing some of them and was you know partaking in quite a bit. And what I found out was is it started to get wild with people who had no interest in cars mm-hmm. coming to these events yeah. just to you know, blow off steam. Let's just summarize it as that. Yeah, yeah. And then, well, who knows what you're going to get, right? Yeah. Because they foresee something. Yeah, like if reckless. you look at the cars that are in the takeover, they're usually like a Charger V6 or, yeah. you know, like it's just that they look like just ho-hum regular cars. It's, you know, you'll get that one clapped out, you know, Nissan Z or something. Yeah. Or a VQ or a G37 or whatever doing the donuts and stuff. But It's not to say there's not nice yeah. cars like that out there, but yeah. it just seems to be those are the cars that go generally. Yeah. And the common excuse, I know we've all heard this, is, well, it's too expensive to go to the track. Mm-hmm. We've done a whole episode on how you can get to the track or to autocross cheaply mm-hmm. and easily. 
yeah. right? So I mean, it's not that's that's not a, it's not an excuse. It's really not an excuse. If you're going to be someone who does these things illegally, just stop using that as an excuse. You really mm -hmm. just sound bad at this point. Yeah. No, <laughs> but, so what, what else? I mean, um, people spend a lot of time in their garages doing builds. Yeah. You guys, 11 tenths was busy. Yeah, we were, uh, we're still slammed. Yeah, we're busy. Right, people doing builds constantly. So yeah. that's that's good. people not traveling, putting money in their cars instead, which is... <laughs> I wonder, um, yeah. let, let's dive back into SEMA for a second there. Yeah. Like, uh, Probably going to be some wicked builds going on this year, I imagine. Yeah. I'm, I'm uh, flying out tomorrow. So, you know, we will, I'm, I'm curious to see how many vendors are there. If, yeah. you know, that... I've been looking into it. Nobody's like really putting down numbers, so right. I, we don't know like what the percentage of the vendors that are going or not coming. Or I mean, it is a global show, so it could be one I mean, or the other. I it, saw there's probably going to be a lot of epic builds because yeah. there's like two year spread from the last SEMA. True. Then they do an yeah. online one, or did they, they kibosh that, mm, or just didn't go well? I don't know. Yeah. No, I I remember seeing just today. I was scrolling on Instagram, and uh, Rotaform actually was looking for extra cars for their booth. Oh yeah. So I I don't know. Maybe it was just a contest or something, but that's yeah. not. So who's to say? Who's to say what we'll see? Um, mm -hmm. and again, same like the the schools where maybe it's just people not being able to get places because of vaccinations or whatnot, and yeah. it'll be interesting to see. So, but you know what? We'll we'll take a pause here uh, and go on to some new stuff. We've got a new segment. We're going to be focusing on uh, our customers' rides and friends' rides here. And uh, first, we're going to start off with our wonderful friend Brad Crane. He's got a 1999 Honda Civic Type R Spoon Clone. Um, I'll let him get into that. It's a pretty sweet ride. Um, a lot of neat stuff. If you're not familiar with the world of Spoon, uh, there are some pretty rare parts. Uh, I'll summarize this way. Randy and I, as you know, are, are big BMW guys, and we went to an all BMW show slash track day uh, mm -hmm. at the, about a month ago, and his car got probably, <laughs> I'd say, the most attention out of... Yeah anyone uh, there in, in our booth at least, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> which that says a lot right there. So without further ado, we'll uh, tap into Brad. So my car is a 1999 Civic Type R Spoon clone. In 1999, we never got an EK9 Type R available in Canada. So I've basically mechanically replicated the Civic Type R with all the spoon spoon goods. Mechanically lies except for the 1.8 liter instead of the 1.6 liter. It's all mechanically the same. The only difference is, is I wasn't able to change the thicker sheet metal in certain areas that Honda added them to the true EK9s. So I bought the car originally. In, um, the sales agreement was for August 12th, 1999, which happens to turn out to be a really good buddy's birthday of mine. Daily driver in, in light forms of uh, modifi modification. And then in uh, 2012, I took the car off the road and basically started the full restoration to turn it into the Spoon clone. So I had started to collect all the Spoon parts since the early 2000s which was very good because now they've gotten a lot of them have gotten astronomically expensive compared to what they were due to the, lim the limited amount that they were built back in the day the spoon ek9 cluster is probably one of the rarest parts for that chassis like 10 years ago you could get one for twenty five hundred dollars now there's rumors ones have sold for up to where it's ten thousand dollars us and and that's because they're limited i'm not sure the exact numbers that they were built in but it's like everything nowadays and you know plus you throw in covid pricing and everything's got astronomically expensive over the last little bit sometimes you know you you know somebody that has a part that you want and you wait like maybe months for them to be ready to part with it or or in cases years just like with a lot of the parts even when you bought them brand new sometimes you waited six eight twelve months for them to show up to come from japan before i was uh got into Hondas I really wanted a Euro I really wanted a Mark II Volkswagen GTI 16 valve but you know I was a young kid I had a decent job I could afford the car and then I called up insurance and uh, they basically shut me down so the spoon the spoon part comes into it is is I really love the euros how they were a lot of at the time were OEM plus 
and the Hondas at that time were, it was the days of the crazy Wings West kits, like, you know, that Dark Knight style, like, crazy mod, which is great. Like, I love what people are doing when they do their own thing. It just wasn't for me. So I really loved how Spoon was, like, the OEM Plus. They were really big into the endurance racing over in Japan at the time, which I've always liked endurance racing more than, say, drag, drag racing. The fact that the parts were Spoon's the type of company that they used to take skids of pistons, Honda factory pistons, and then sort them all so that they would be, you know, within tighter specs of tolerance with each other. So I'd have to say that probably my favorite part is the braking system that I have on that car, which is a full EK9 swap, five lug, lug, lug conversion with the larger disc, disc brakes in the, in the rear, as mine didn't come with it, factory being a D, DX at the time that I bought it. And then with the spoon front calipers, you can push so deep, you can brake so hard. It's how I can catch up in my little car that's underpowered today to most like most modern cars. It's like how you have your, your fun because it's, it's so light, you can go longer, deeper into the corners. Like all the creature comforts are gone. There's no air conditioning, the radio's removed, there's no power steering, there's no power windows. It's like a true full analog experience, which you don't really get in this day anymore in this technological world. Like when I got the car done the restoration, I go over to a friend's house and his kids are there and they're like six to 10 years old or whatever. And they're looking at the door and they don't even know what a window winder is anymore because everybody just pushes a, a button. So and on track, I, I, I love it. Like everybody seems to say, I go for a lapping day. It looks like I'm having the most fun because it'll get like squirrely, you know, I've had it properly set up by Scott at Can Alignment. So it handles really well. Like it's fun. Like you go in to a corner, you trail break, you start to feel the back coming in and you just put that foot to the floor and you just pull yourself out. And of course it's, uh, you know, it's a B series, so you'd always like a little bit more torque, a little bit more power when you're you're coming out of that. And then the one thing I also love about the car too is, and I think everybody that loves Hondas loves it, is the VTEC. It goes from that kind of sane to like, ah, you know, and it, it doesn't matter. You can be doing 50 kilometers an hour, and when the VTEC comes in, it's party time. <laughs> You, you've owned it and you go on this sometimes like this emotional emotional ride of the, the memories the people the all the different events that you've you've gone to I'm sure like most of us you go out and you go for that ride and in that moment you're in the zone and whatever over 20 years of like progress of collecting and it's been a labor of love for sure for me, the favorite part is the championship white paint. I love that color of white. I've always been a fan of white cars. I like how in a lot of ways my car looks under understate, understated. I don't mind that sometimes people don't realize what's going on and just walk by at a car show, but the people that do know, do know. So my version of the restoration and my idea was over the years as I daily drove it and the reason why I did not put all the brand new spoon parts back on it as I collected it was as I always had a vision that I would restore the car someday and then put all the new parts on at once and then over the years this kind of took on more of a life than I ever expected because originally I thought you know you just go buy a type R swap from one of the JDM importers but I was lucky enough to have the the means and uh, i had a little bit of a connection at honda luckily before they were all discontinued i purchased a brand new b18 c5 from honda to the best of my ability when the parts were still available new i did it i bought like you know a couple thousand dollars worth of bolts and stuff from honda to do it like because i'd had the car for so long and I knew that I wanted to keep it I did my absolute best to basically turn it into like a brand new car so next uh, basically I have planned for the cars to enjoy it and drive it a lot and uh, perfect my my end of the deal the the driving of it you know start to master the craft of putting that thing around the track you know put in some better better lap times i mean i i would also like to do a little bit of upgrades to the in, interior replace a few of the plastic pieces that are a little bit more what i consider to be on the the worn side you know and then yeah one day it would be nice to strip it all apart again and put it on the rotisserie rotisserie and do like a perfect body but then i don't know then maybe it not won't be a driver because 
And at the end of the day, that's what I want to do with it now is enjoy it and drive it, drive it in the rain, get it dirty, you know, take it places and enjoy it. Cause I think that's what cars are meant to be for. I don't know how they, you know, to each their own, but I don't know how you can invest so much time and energy and money into something like that and then not go out and enjoy it for what they are meant to be used for. And then also to just take it out and let everybody see what is now at the time you would have never known when I was doing this back in the day, but now it's been, been dubbed the, the golden era of Honda, Honda tuning. So if you're interested more in the car, check out the uh, description be below and uh, who knows, maybe we'll see you out at a car show. I'm more than welcome to show you the car. And if we're at a lapping day, I don't mind taking you for a ride along. If you like, comment. Yeah. <laughs> so that was Brad and his wonderful Civic. I mean, just a clean car. And for him to be the single owner and spend that much time with it, that's pretty rare. Yeah. Uh, it's not often you have an original buyer from something 22 years ago. It's true. And, it's true. Uh, you know, just throw that much passion into it. And it's almost like a second take in, uh, in the car's life cycle, you know, to try and to really update it. And, uh, you know, he, he had a vision and he just went ahead for it. And, determination yeah and he yeah. loves that car he does yeah. now uh, other things going on um, come by the showroom again if you haven't been to the shop recently the yeah. uh, showroom has been redone a little yeah, bit we moved the uh, moved a few things around we we did have the showroom upstairs um, we needed uh, the upstairs for some storage and we ended up moving all the display cases downstairs uh, we took the training sim out it's actually off-site right now but we're still using it and um, just come by the show, come by the shop, and we'll show you around the showroom and stuff. Yeah, Pretty see what you got. Get exciting. your get your build list ready. I've already sent my list to Randy to start quoting. Okay. So it's yeah. uh, you know, and it, now's that time of year where you start yeah. thinking about what next and exactly. Yeah, start that ordering thing. the parts over the winter because you it's know, been long. Lead or, is that changed? Yeah. Lead time still long for parts? Oh yeah, it's okay. longer than ever. It's see, crazy. there you, there you yeah. go. So you know what? Tidbit. Yeah. Get started early, even if you can't buy it right mm -hmm. away. Like yeah. deposit, and then your part comes down the road. So be aware of that. That's something yeah. that's still going on. Exactly. Um, so like we said, for the next episode, stay tuned. We'll touch on uh, SEMA as well, and mm -hmm. uh, we've got some new stuff coming out. We'll yep. we'll do with uh, Randy's tidbits. Yeah. Uh, pay pay attention for that. Uh, subscribe, like, click the button, please. Join in the conversation. Yep. Let us know if you'd want us to feature your ride, or yep. if. Uh, you know, you just want to hang out. Give us a shout. Once again, thanks for staying tuned, and uh, we'll see you soon. Thank you.